part two, session four. <laughs> Just think how many, those old buildings, how long they've been used. My God. Still being used. Mm -hmm. But the bowling alley that was that we're talking about, was that the one that got burned out mm -hmm. on that street? Because I was working that night at the, at the rest home. And it was so scary because we could see the smoke coming up from the bowling alley and the, that old cafe. And we didn't even hear the fire sirens that night. And Wayne McCoy's auction on the farm sale was out south. And our UMW was going to have the lunch stand and went down through town to go to the sale. Oh, that <laughs> was <laughs> Yeah, really? And it was burned out. We hadn't even heard the... Yeah, I didn't know anything about it. Heaven went downtown. Well, I went to work early. And here I saw all that stuff, all those guys down the street in the fire trucks, and I couldn't imagine it until I, I got down there, no buildings. Mm -hmm. She aimed me Christmas. Mm -hmm. I called Irene Vanneman and told her that there's a big fire on Main Street. Oh, that's she here, here, did Oh, know. she came right to town, she and her daughter. How many buildings and what uh, businesses was it that was burnt there? Uh, uh, the bakery. The bakery, the, and the bowling alley, and Schofield. And uh, Schofield, too. Uh, 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 and that was right uh, next to Dave Fritz's place there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And let's see, yeah, there's one more. Oh, and the uh, roast skating rink. Or not the roast skating rink, but I mean the bowling alley. Yeah, the bowling, yeah, the bowling alley. alley. But that was right between Schofields and uh -huh. the bakery. Yeah. And so those three businesses just got mm -hmm. hot at that mm -hmm. Yeah. Not to change the subject, but I think it's kind of neat, um, Kevin Urban's building that they're calling it Cunningham Feed. <laughs> They're going to feed cute. people. And, mm -hmm. Isn't that cute? That was Cunningham Feed. Are they still putting that name on it? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well, you had the incorp corporation papers in the public mirror last year. Oh, was it? That's referred to as Cunningham Feed. Cunningham Feed? feed? <laughs> <laughs> so if you watch this week, it'll probably be in there again. Because oh, Helen I said one that. time she thought that was, she said, I don't know whether he should do that or not, and that's about a year ago. She's, I heard her say that. Well, it's Cunningham Feed that I didn't ask the other night, but yeah. I wonder if they still have got that back there with that, that back restroom with it, the restroom, the toilet and stuff. That's where we went back and you reached overhead and there's always one up there. Huh. Take down, take a good shot and say uh -huh. thank you, Sam. <laughs> no, I, <don't> know. <laughs> I think they changed the restrooms. <laughs> <laughs> They might still have something hidden. <laughs> but Helen and Kevin are always close for some reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. Well, other things that were in that um, Frost and Curry building, Frost and Curry, that burned, Frost and Curry built that. Um, it was a Ford garage, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. And Mr. then... Uh, then Depression I, hit. Depression hit, and and uh, then that part of that was uh, Chet Babbitt it was during the war, and um, he taught some kind of class so uh, the farmers could learn how to work on their vehicles, vi uh, their tractors, yeah. mm. and um, well, where was that building then? Well, oh. that was what burned. That was part of the bowling alley. And oh, it was? Mm -hmm. That's where they kept the, the German prisoners come down and work. Oh, where they no. stayed and slept and mm -hmm. ate. Well, there's sort of a tower up on top of that building where Irene... Yeah, is that, that, a, that's the, that, that was the Legion um, tower, lookout. and that was a lookout. Mm -hmm. As a defense. Yeah, it's still defense. there. There's yeah. too many yeah. stories about that. I think so. <laughs> I looked, it's in the paper someplace, but I haven't found it. But it's still on the building, isn't mm -hmm. it? I oh, think so. That's what they used, to, sure. they used to claim that they were, we were watching for little flying planes. Maybe <laughs> aliens. <laughs> Old Bill Gould, guys, mm -hmm. we'd go up there and he'd bring up the, a six pack or so with us, so we'd stand and stay up there. And, 
<laughs> then we got so much trying to see who we can hit with the empties. <laughs> oh, God. Well, I think the people that, is nothing great, but you go to any implement house today and there's just lots of shops and elaborate shops and that. Google had that down there with Jerry Ten Bats on there was another building. And he ran the implement business without a mechanic there. He just had piles of parts scattered around and he knew where it was. Yeah. yeah. He was one in the middle. Yeah. There was but, micro was one in the middle. Yeah, he was a sharp cook. Mm -hmm. Five grocery stores? Uh-huh. We did? There was um, IGA over there where uh, Kohler. Telephone wheel. Kohler. Yeah, Kohler's. And then there was Williams Brothers. And then there was Lewis Brothers on the corner down there where the senior center is. Mm -hmm. And then across the street there where uh, Pete Stagemeyer has was a little small area for Wagner's. That was Wagner's. Yeah, it was yeah. Jack Wagner bought that from Orville Moore. Uh -huh. It was Orville Moore for years. And then there was a little grocery store. Right up here. Up here somewhere you could pick up a few things if you forgot something or build a kid or something. That was for the school kids. Oh, what's that? What it was for? <laughs> well, that's the ones that really made it go. Probably was. Oh, what the heck were those people that had that? Because um, our kids went there. Can't remember. Oh, their right. son married the oldest Zealand girl. Well, I know that, but I can't think. Yeah, I'm just trying And they, to... they lived, when we moved from down there south of the tracks, Les and I lived there when Dan was born, when we moved away from there, those people moved it. Vance Howard. Yeah, okay, Howard. Yeah, yeah, that's right. They, they moved down there. <laughs> and their daughter and little girl was living with them because the daughter's husband was overseas. It was during the war. Yeah. Well, do you remember out in the country, we used to have, I think they must have been a civil defense exercises or something where we had to pull the shades and, and you couldn't have any light showing in the windows. I remember when, and we lived six and a half miles out in the country, it's just darker and dark out there. And we covered our windows so that the enemy wouldn't see us. We used to, we used to have that. something like that when I lived in Gaptis in my kindergarten, they used to do something like that. Where, where was it that? Say six it miles out. Was six and a half miles south of Wilsonville, oh, where we lived. Oh, that's where you and your husband lived. No, it's my parents when I was a little girl. And I, it would have been World War II then at the beginning of that, but, but there would be certain times that we were supposed to do that, you know, so. I don't remember doing that. That was, I was so in, impressed with that, how <laughs> terrible that would be if there was somebody going to come and get us, you know. So, boy, I kept my shade down. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, you haven't said much about all that Reapy family. No. You got a long story there. Oh, you don't want to hear all that, do you? <laughs> well, <laughs> sure. Yeah, that's what they want. Okay. Well, where I live is where the my great grandfather, when he got as far west as Nebraska, by they homestead or came way out here. I mean, that's where they homestead. Yeah. Came here from Arlington. And I guess there was a homestead, I mean a sod house, and then when they got title to it, well, they were about broke, so they went back to Arlington, and some of the kids stayed here and broke sod, I guess. And then he came back and built the house there, and that was it. They didn't leave again. None of them. His dad had said he lived in the sod house when he was a kid. Now, Leon, if you broke sod, did you own the property then? Or did that give you any ownership to it? No, it took, I suppose there's different ways to get title to ground. The common one was homesteading. You got to, and you had to stay five years. To, oh, okay. And there were some people who got title to ground by these tree claims. And, Oh. And I don't know. Them. Some of them, up where Grandpa Heister got his, 
I don't know just how much, but the Berwyn, the government gave the railroads ground mm -hmm. if they built land or yes. railroad lines, and part of that ground up there was they bought it from the railroad company. So. Was it t ten acres of trees that they had to put out? I think the tree claim was ten acres. That's what I was thinking. I remember. And I think the railroad was that they got a section out of each township or something. Well, there used to be a, tr when we walked to school, there used to be a tree claim on the north side of the road. There's a hill between over ulcers and the schoolhouse. And it was just the other side of that hill, there was a tree claim on the north side of the road. But it hasn't been there for years now. It hasn't been there for a long, long time. Can you imagine what a tree claim would have done the last six years or something, whatever that drought, you know, and oh, we watered trees that were live there for three weeks, never shut the hydrant off for three weeks at a time. And, and there was nothing to do then except carry it with a bucket and that, right. that would be a wasted effort. Oh, I, that was, that's great. We watered a lot of trees. Yeah. I know this uh, old Laura Horton told me once that they bought some old chickens from us, she and Van. She grew up out north here somewhere, but she said I got her. no sentiment for living in the country. She said Dad would make her pump pump the well to put water in the tank for the cows, and she said I'd pump and I'd ball and I'd pump and I'd ball some more. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was out at Gosper. Well, that well was probably deeper than some others. And but there was a there was a windmill out there. Why wouldn't they have used the? Well, wherever she was doing it, they must have had to. Because either pictures. was no windmill, or else there was wasn't working. I don't well, know the wind didn't the always wind blow. Didn't blow. Yeah, <laughs> I remember yeah, because one true. night I had to pump thirteen bucks of water and catch the chickens, and they. Drank it up faster than I could pour it in there. It was a real hot, still day, and they they drank that water up faster than I could pour it in there. That used to make me so mad, the old Holsteins, you know, they, yeah. if you run out of water, the other cows couldn't get up there. Those Holsteins would keep drinking, and they would get that wide, you know, but they would still just keep drinking. You know. Oh, God. <laughs> That's true, isn't it? Well, uh -huh. <laughs> you get so mad at them Holstein. But... <laughs> yeah, my about... dad had was mostly Holstein. Yeah. So he had a few others, but not very many. Did he have some that he had to put kickers on when you? Uh huh. Yeah. He had one that was real good at that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he always milked that one. I got to milk Spot. She was a spotted cow, and she's gentle, and so he let me milk that one, and then. My sister would milk, I think it was Marcy, which was uh, uh, a hosting, but it was a gentle, gentle er cow. <laughs> it didn't kick like that. So, <laughs> but this one, I don't remember what that one was called. Dozy, I believe her name was, and she always had to put the kickers on that <laughs> for that to milk, and then she was trying to put her foot in the bucket. <laughs> We always named our cows, too. Mm -hmm. They had all kinds of names. <laughs> yeah, my uh, brother had a cow uh, named Clarabelle, and uh, he won a uh, purple ribbon oh. at the fair with it one year. And then he took the next year and they had his calf there. And then uh, I think he won a purple ribbon that year, too. So. <laughs> he had some ribbons for me. Yeah, you got you got stories about old Mac, funny stories he used to tell you? Oh, no, I remember what's in there, yes. Oh, heavens. You got him hidden that memory, I know you do. He was always saying something good to make you laugh. <laughs> yeah. Huh? <laughs> well. He'd always come up with something with. I know. He kept you guys going. Yeah. Kept you happy. Yeah. That killer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were talking about Max Swindon. He lived close.
almost there too. Well, I think about yeah. Mac Yucker. Yeah. Oh gosh, he was a good character. Yeah. I enjoy looking at the down at the museum that book of the pictures that uh, Don Gunn drew the guys that went to the cafe. Yeah. Yours is in there. Yeah. Yeah, he drew me a picture of me one time. <laughs> it really looks like you too. <laughs> he was good, wasn't he? Yeah, he was good painter. How much sugar did you put in your coffee then? Can't remember it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Probably enough. <laughs> yeah. Did you stir it up or did they have to wash it out of the cup when you got to it? No, I think I used it. Great. <laughs> I don't remember who it was at Kevin Cafe that always poured so much sugar in the coffee and they Moose. never served it. Herman yeah, Moose. that's yeah. who it was. Who he was did, it? Herman Moose. He just keep pouring her and pouring her. <laughs> and it'd he get, never it'd, served it. It'd, it'd get up so it just, oh. it wouldn't run over. But it'd be <laughs> that close, wouldn't it? I might feel this cup clear up just about like that, y'all. Yeah. He started pouring sugar, and he did, kept pouring the coffee running all over the counter, but he yeah. poured all, all the sugar in there. No, I know. Yeah, I know. He didn't pour any less. He just poured it all in. <laughs> yeah, they used to have the cream, or the half and half, was in these stainless little pitchers. And, yeah. And an old uh, Thompson had the restaurant on the east side of the road. And I didn't, highway, I didn't see that, but old Gus Lysing went in there and got his coffee. And, he used the creamer, but anyhow, Thompson came back to get the cream for somebody else. He stood up and it was empty. And <laughs> old Gus had drank coffee and he had drank the creamer too. He just had a <laughs> ring around his <laughs> Well, remember the, the old cafe before they built the brick one that's there now? Um, Merle Adams had yeah, it for a while, and then... Bill right in was a filling station there. Yeah, the Don Gunn was in there for the yeah. time they were here. Oh, guys, Merle Adams, just, that was a... She baked those pies, and boy, he had a gold mine going. Mm -hmm. yep. Those guys, that, all the truckers had stopped for pie and coffee. Mm -hmm. Was that Benita then that made the pies? No, no it was Vera Faye's mother. Oh, Vera Faye's mother. Anna was her name. Oh. But that was a different era too, like so many things. That before the interstates, Highway 6 carried it. Carried a lot of traffic. Yeah, carried a lot of traffic. And I think, uh, I think that stayed open 24 hours yeah, a day. Yeah, oh, it did. Station yeah. and the cafe both. Mm -hmm. uh, they used to have the bus stop here too. Oh, yeah. yeah. The There's a lot of people. I mean, the cafe, you had to hurry and get them served so they get back on the bus. Yeah. Where was this located? At the Derby. Okay. When I worked up there. I worked in the new one. I didn't work in the old one. Yeah. The filling the station, station was where the, well, where your boy has his shop. There. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the cafe was on the That's west end of the. Well, there's seven or eight filling stations in town too at that time. Yes, there were. I think we there's counted up nine at one time. There probably were. Eight or nine at one time. But Can you remember who they station. are? Just for the record. There was co-op and it was across the street there and the uh, Conco, Texaco, uh, Fred, uh, Evans, mm -hmm. downtown and... Push. Yeah. Philip 66 was where the K store is. Oh, yeah. And then Bush's are out east and old, uh, mm -hmm. old Doc Davis or mm -hmm. yeah. Salma Handy had one there. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But they said there was one on the north side about where, uh, and I can't remember, I can't recall it, about where Bellamy's yeah, where their stuff, and that was Dr. Pugh that built that. He was a veterinarian. Oh, yeah. He, he was there a while. He had Don Wolf worked there. That's where he got it. Yeah. On that one on the north side. Where Bush's were? No, it was where Bellamy's machinery oh. lot is. East, okay. 
east across from, or south of uh, Sunbird Storage. Okay. Well, I just can't for the life of me remember that station. I remember Doc Davis's, but <coughs> the other one. And there's a, several cafes in town, too. There's Clark down there where the dance office is or somewhere down there. It's where uh, Teen Town was. Teen Town, yeah. And, Maybe that's where it was. And the insurance. Mm -hmm. And then there was the Jerby, and Goldie Thompson had one down there. Mm -hmm. There was one at the old co-op station. Yeah. And then there was a little one. There's still a little building, I think, is still there by Kenny Cuts, just to the yeah, west of Kenny Cuts. Yeah. Oh, really? It says cafe on and the street. And then there was one out. I don't know whether they were all at the same time, but there was one out there with Selma Handy's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She used to be in a cafe. Yeah. And we had two drug stores, Magorians and uh, Sources. And then there was uh, uh, something else, can't remember what. <laughs> well, it was the M&H Cafe, my in-laws. They started, when they came from the farm down east, they had that little one out by Kenny Cuts. And oh. then they went to the co-op, mm -hmm. the old co-op cafe. Uh -huh. and. Then they were downtown, and I think it's the building where Williams Brothers is yeah, now. Somewhere. And that was the M and H cafe. Well, and Goldie we, Thompson had one yeah. down there. And then Handy's had one. Mm -hmm. Got a little one down there. Mm -hmm. well, there were a lot more people around though than there are now. We mm -hmm. just Rapo and Cambridge are about the same size, but there's so much rural population in those days. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't remember um, why I don't remember, but there was a, after World War II, uh, the boys were coming home and getting married, and there wasn't enough housing, and they put in trailers where um, I think it's where the medical clinic is now, small trailer houses, and Van Horton's Van and Mert. Uh, had the wash house, the laundry facility for those. Mm -hmm. But I can't remember for the life of me that trailer house, those don't trailer houses being either. there. And then there were some more of them over east, um, somewhere, they told me, somewhere close to where the city building is. Uh, the, not the city building, but the shop. Upholstery shop? Yeah. Now also was roller skating rink at one time. Yeah, kids were little. We used to go there roller skating. We did too. Mm -hmm. Was that in in the uh, old city building? The, the yeah, line in the building? old city building. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, they had a special, a special floor seat. surface in there. Uh -huh. I fell hard. down one time and I, oh, I sat down so hard I thought I'd never, <laughs> never get up again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Dwayne and. And Doris Missing were pretty much in charge of that. Oh, gosh. They loved that. Mm -hmm. I yeah. had to always run into a wall. I didn't know how to stop on those silly <laughs> skates. And I always have to put my hands out and run into a wall to get stopped. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I couldn't figure out how you did yeah. it without upsetting them and falling down. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Leon, can you remember going to Horton's? Park over west of Beaver City when they had roller skating out there. No, I didn't, but I've read and heard about it. They had animals out there. They yeah. had, I think they had a bear, yeah. if I remember right. Well, I, I remember the last day of school, the year I graduated, we walked out there. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how much longer they had that. That was sneak day, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. We didn't have sneak day when I graduated. <laughs> well, you got to go to Colorado on a sneak trip. Oh. That, that was a big deal. When I was a kid. Yeah. Oh, I have a sneak day for us. We, had, we went to McCook. We went up the airport out there. The, I mean, the uh, where the, the war planes were. Uh -huh. And they showed us how to guide the planes and stuff like that. And went back downtown. Went to a show and 
came home. <laughs> you know, I think maybe Arapaho kids in 39, I think they would, had a one day trip someplace out of town for sneak day, but Beaver City didn't get them. Arapaho <laughs> probably went to Hastings. I can't remember. I don't know. I've read about it. Leanne, what did you do for entertainment back there at the farm? Did you have anything special that you remember? Oh, I remember when we got a radio. Mm -hmm. And we had a, sometimes we had a daily paper, we didn't always. Mm -hmm. I had often thought, you know, you get used to the way you grow up, but mm -hmm. some of the kids now, if they didn't have radio, didn't have television, didn't have a newspaper, and the car only went to town twice a week, I guess, during World War II, because they had the rationing, and that's all the gas Dad had, <laughs> or at least that's what he told us. It worked. It worked, yeah. <laughs> well, one of those times was on Sunday to church, probably, yeah? yeah. Saturday and Sunday. Did you? Yeah, we always just go shopping on Saturday night. That was a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bought her groceries and then go back for another week. And now you go down in town on Saturday and there are hardly any cars on the street. I know. Even when we first married, we hadn't heard it buy our groceries, so we'd get home and listen to gun smoke. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think there is something different now because that main street is pretty empty uh -huh. mm -hmm. about noon. Now, there's a while, you know, in the senior center. Because that's not a bunch of big spenders either. And then it'll just be about four or five cars on that block. Probably go to Walmart somewhere. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, there's not that many people, but then the second, they may mm -hmm. go somewhere else part of the time. When we usually got to go to town on Saturday night, because my dad worked at the equity store, where down just north of the museum. Yeah, mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, he would. He worked on Saturday and dollar days, and so mom and the boys would have the cows milked, and he'd come home during his supper hour, and we'd go back to town with him. And the store stayed open till midnight, and everybody stood around talking, And but us kids usually got to go to the movie then. Yeah, yeah the movie was so. fun. Yeah, they used to have pre movies down at Adams, where, and benches outside if you'd watch a pre movie in the summertime. Mm -hmm. well, they also hay you know. sometimes. Yeah, they had that too. Oh yeah, that's. And then they had a, a round thing sometimes a band would play music. Yeah. You'd listen to that. The bandstand. And yeah, mm -hmm. the bandstand. Where was this at? At Adams, Nebraska, oh, right. where, yeah, where, Adams where I lived. Well, when so I was had kid. a had a one uh, deal too a bandstand where they played. Well, there used to be an old bandstand down in the middle of the park here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think but I remember that too. I'm sure. They used to play in that darn thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you read the <coughs> items about that, it was um, a lot of the businessmen that um, played, played the instruments. And they yeah. would go, uh, well, when they had Dollar Day or some booster sort of thing, they'd have booster days and they'd go to front from town to town and close around and, oh, and uh, play the, the band and play mm -hmm. and I've been, I remember going on those. Yeah. Dad always had to go along and, and make sure if anybody broke down he could pull them home. <laughs> <laughs> and old Walter Scott Ruber always broke down. <laughs> <laughs> the guy was the head of the band. Yeah. So we'd pull him in. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. That's where I got I got to guide it right behind the the car. <laughs> Thought you were pretty big, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I read where years ago when they did that, um, quite often, there were, I don't know if it was churches or just <clears throat> the wives of the band members or what, but they would uh, make homemade ice cream and sell it in the park then. Yeah. My grandpa used to like to play croquet, and they had a, a bunch of older men got together and played croquet in the park down there in Adams. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, he bought me tell some about they those croquet onions. Yeah, huh? <laughs> Don't you remember when those guys, your old dad used to come over there yeah. and play croquet back at the old filling station? Yeah. I remember him. We might have even had his club sitting inside the garage. <laughs> <laughs> well, they used to have uh, two or three uh, team, croquet teams. They yeah, would go out of town. Um, one place they went was to Elwood and had little tournaments. Yeah. Uh, Oscar Croft had that filling station over there. Well, that's why I'm coming back to us there. Mm -hmm. And Lauren Sanchez said her dad used to play in the band. He used to have a dance band. Mm -hmm. Oh, have they went to dances. I don't right know over where the old, that was. But right over the old uh, senior center. Is that what Upstairs it was? there. Yeah. Now he, he used to play in that. She used to talk about that. Well, they'd play in houses, yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. Friends that used to sing oh, with Bull Tate, he went every place. And Yodel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's another thing we did. She knew how to go and dance on Saturday night to somebody's house. They used all the furniture out of the living room and people would dance. Oh, gosh. Okay. How about out there at Snowball? They used to come out there and have dances. Yeah. Huh? I don't know much about that. I went to school there for eight years, I guess, but wouldn't they dance in the back at that time? <laughs> they all came later, I guess. Two years later, when they actually started having those. Yeah. Well, I think Chet and Myron Hilker were involved. Maybe not Chet, but Myron Hilker was in some of them. Well, um, very few of the rural schoolhouses around anymore. Uh, that snowball one's about the only one I can think of that's yes. still standing. Well, well, no, there's there one down on the valley. Uh, District 16. Then there's one uh, south of Cambridge, uh, District 45 that I went to. That's still standing. There's not yes. much left of it, but it's still standing. Right out by the Isaac Walton. Yeah. yeah. But I'm sure that's pretty run down. The windows mm -hmm. are broke and the roof shingles are missing. Places. Well, there's one up by the lake, isn't there? Yes. Yeah. You know, the north of Cambridge. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's just kind of a shell left of it. But is that up there just before you go that to Kerr? <laughs> yeah. Well, that isn't quite worth it. They used to go to school, they went to school, and they moved out to be for to Adams. And that was the library. They made it to the library. So that's a library. Yeah, I know you're Let's say. Unless they uh, pass the cookies to them, Richard. Bill Dawn or something. Well, that isn't yeah. the kind of thing we're talking about, but Ron and Darcy Gardner's house is a country school. Just like a little bit. But they built it later and then they converted it to a house. Mm -hmm. And, and did that, was that school, did it have a basement in it to begin with when it was know. built? I don't know. But it was built in the later years, you know, mm -hmm. say after 1950. It's real nice, I guess. I haven't nice, been either. Yeah. Yeah. Where's that? It's where Ron and Darcy Gardner live. If you go what north of town, where that county, Gosford County shop is, you turn east on that new road, you just keep going and going and going, and then eight or ten miles, it's on the north side of the road. I suppose it's eight miles. It's past the Edison Junction. Grace, she told me you wasn't feeding us. I'm not. I'm getting rid of my cookies that I baked last Wednesday. <laughs> no, she told me to eat, but she had to feed. Okay, that's exactly right. I didn't go to any trouble, but I'm trying to get rid of them. They're getting pretty awful. Or ever make something next time before, you know, feed them. <laughs> well, I figure you could soak them into your coffee. <laughs> They're that bad. They're good. Well, still, you still haven't started them, but what that old reaping that used to uh, kind of hit you, start towards town, kind of hitchhike the town, and then yeah. he hitchhike home? That was Casper. Casper? Yeah. Well, Did now, he, what is Casper to Bernard or any of the other brothers? Are they brothers or cousins or what? I don't know that relationship. Okay. No, the homesteader, great grandpa, he had 11 kids. Okay. He and then grandma. And then two of them passed away in Illinois. They're buried out there. Okay. Nine of them came to Rockland. Eight, 
eight boys and a girl. Really? And Cassie is the baby of the family. So. Casper was the baby? Yeah. Mm -hmm. My grandpa was Fred. He had the land where a house was in. And then Adam had it. And then there was Ed had the place where Babe lives. He died fairly young. George's dad. Yeah. Or Babe who? Babe Riney. Yeah, you dad. gotta say that. Okay. And John lived over east there. Wayne McCoy has a farm ground and Dixon's Up on top of the hill there. And Dixon's had a house. Yeah. Okay. And Frank lived up on the hill here where Bellamy's are. Oh. That was the White House that was torn down. Oh, really? Oh. And, uh, didn't Mr. Uh, what's his name? Who? Phillips lives horses. there. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Dale Phillips was at that same house. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. And then Frank or Henry lived west of the golf course. He had that quarter, and then he had 240 acres south of the road that Bob Anderson has there, mm -hmm. where the schoolhouse was. Oh, is that Harry's dad? He was a cripple. He had fallen against the stove or something and he about ruined the hand when he was caught. Kid. And then he he farmed and got had a family and stuff and then he was he uh, would help those other guys strike, but he couldn't couldn't pitch bottles or scoop grain with one hand. You know, yeah. So he drove horses on the water wagon for steam engine. Something happened and it swooped them things and he got, got thrown off and they ran over his stomach and they squeezed him. Mm -hmm. Killed him. Not right away, but he killed him. And then Mrs. Cricket was the only girl. She lived, Alan Cricket lived where, that place where Laverne had their little yeah. highway. I suppose they built that house where I thought old Tim Perrin is going to, he's fixing it up, isn't he? Owned it now, yeah. And then there was a Ben. He had the, what Lyle Briney owns, it used to call it Green Place. And then he went to Illinois and he got married out there and stayed out there. Mm -hmm. And then there was Bill. He lived where I do. He was a bachelor. He and Cassie were bachelors. Oh. I know Dad said, Bill came to get him one night. He said, he said in town that Cassie was sick. So he came and he had a paper sack. Went over to see Cassie and he laid it down. Had a loaf of bread and a package of men's hand there. He never said anything about Cassie's health or anything. <laughs> Cassie started eating and eating and eating. He was just plum hungry. Or something. <laughs> oh. Really? Yeah, I'm not kidding. Well, there wasn't all the stuff for his now. No. But they never spoke to Cassie's house and they never took the, what was left home and <laughs> <laughs> never had any more trouble. So. Yeah. <coughs> And when the Crickets moved to town, um, didn't they build the house that uh, the Bertha Regal lived? I don't know. One time, that was prior to that, but Cat, or Alan Cricket built those two houses that, oh, McGorian lived in one. Of them. Oh, then the other one. And Fogg lived in the other one? I think so. I was going to say it though. Oh, I can't say the trail. Trail, John Trail. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, was, I think Paul was with him. That's where Cal grew up. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> he didn't know. Crew, or, I don't think that Alan Prickett owned him anymore, but he had built or got the bill. So. Well, they had, the, they had about the same yeah, floor. They always had that floors tip, and tip off on the roof there. Yeah. I suppose he probably used the same set of plans for both of them, I suppose. Just about, I think. Is it still there? Oh, um, oh yeah. The yeah. house mother's house is still there. I think Trail still has 
stuff in his house, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. The brothers, there is. Well, they tell me it's just kind of a storage place for the oh, all the older things and stuff that all the trails have, have purchased. You know, it's kind of just a place to, to keep things. Who was who was Harry Reapy's mother? Uh, Harry is who's was, whose wife is Harry? Uh, well, that's uh, Ella. Okay. Right. Harry's mother's maiden name was Anna Sidmeyer. Oh, Sidmeyer? Mm -hmm. And they lived right, well, like the north edge of the golf course, and you went straight back. Yeah, there was a road west between the golf course and and where Kramer lives. It was kind yeah. of a ditch went up the hill. Now, old Chet Barkman went out there for a long time with one of these searchers. Yeah. Oh, and he spent a long time. What was he looking for? Just hunting for things, oh. anything metallic or anything like that. He picked, he picked up a lot of stuff out there. Like what? I don't get old things that were laying there from this old buildings. There's a lot of people do that at the park and the schoolhouse now. Yeah, you know, I still guess. Still find things too. Mm -hmm. Find money and yeah, jewelry. I didn't get this from family history. It's in this book, Early Arapaho, but the park now, Joe Einstein used to own that block and he during the 1890s somewhere. Sometimes it was dry and then again they had big crops and there's no price. And Joe Einstein put it, had those slat corn cribs put up in there and he'd buy corn that was stored there in the park. Oh, is that right? Until the price went up? Well, I don't know what he did, but he did that. Well, Bede Williams, uh, there was an article in the paper that Williams, as Bede had built some, and I was told it was over on the west side behind where, uh, well, where Steve McCoy's business would be, that he had corn cribs there, mm -hmm. that at one time he would take payment oh. in corn. Oh, really? <laughs> My gosh, <laughs> I don't remember that. Well, I, I bet he did. I didn't remember it either, but somebody said that, and then when we tried to find out where somebody at Edison told us that's where it was. Hmm. Probably not. He was living in Mars, he? We, no. Mm -hmm. I didn't think so. No, none of those people are. No. Uh, his wife, Marie, just died last year. I was getting sad. The second was both gone. Mm -hmm. My daughter <clears throat> went to a funeral of her husband's aunt or something like that in Kansas somewhere. And uh, uh, their son, Ron, I believe, yeah. Yeah. is an undertaker. That way. And, and they, uh, they met him and talked to him for a while. Mm -hmm. He said he knew giving me. Oh, yeah. He, Mom used to, see, they lived right next to us there, right north of us. And I went, he always checked out what, what, who was going to be the cook for him for that day. <laughs> so he'd see what he was going to have at home, then he'd come over and see mom, see what she had. Well, lots of times, she fed him more than his mother did. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> he was a character. Oh, she loved him. Yeah. Well, that Ronnie how, was in How many jail. was in the, uh, his family? How many children did he have? Mm -hmm. Five, six or seven, didn't like five or six. Mm -hmm. They lost the little Monica. There's two girls and three boys that I can think of. Ronnie and Hugh and Todd. Is there another one? Four boys, I think. I think I just can't think right now, but you know. Is there a Scott? Or Steve? Mm -hmm. What were you going to say, Leon, before you got sidetracked? Oh, I don't know. I was going to say Bede Williams had a bunch of government stuff. I think it was, I'm not sure, but I think it's where the wrestling is. He had stuff called in from different uh, 
government facilities like airport or any buildings he had and stuff dismantled. I know he had a lot of toilet bowls and laboratories laying there. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. They had an auction of it. They used to fly the uh, weddings or when they already had the airplane. Well, hey, Jim, tell us about your airplane. Yeah. <laughs> I flew up to Parks in South Dakota this one one time. My cousin had got married. I went to town again and flew up there. <laughs> flew back. <laughs> Your brother was a pilot too, wasn't he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was in the Air Force. Were you a pilot in the service? No. How did you learn? I learned right here. Oh. From Tex Ritz? Yeah, well, Tex you was know, his instructor's rating. I was his first student. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a nice memory, isn't it? Yeah. He used to help Tex when he was spraying. For fields too, you go out and you know, right. flag yeah. or Flight whatever, board. so that he would guide him through the field. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did he ever do acrobats when you were riding with him? No, I used to do some once in a while. I had to do the loop once in a while. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's clear up around. <laughs> did you ride with him when he did that? No, no, I did the loop, but he took me from. I got to Fairbury and they did something on the plane, I don't remember what they fixed on it, and then they flew back uh, to Rappahoe. I remember that. <laughs> God, not a day. As far as I ever flew with him, we just would go for a short ride to around town. So, oh, God. You know, around the country. Yeah. And he you took all up. my family. I think he took my sister and, and uh, uh, brother. He kind of fun to have an airplane again to fly once in a while, but it'd be pretty expensive to yeah. get an older one. Yeah, I know. Old Tex used to go low enough he'd touch the sunflowers, I guess. Yeah. Uh, under the telephone wires, yeah. I heard. Yeah. One Please. time I was stacking hay out there, and I, I just finished up topping out a haystack that's about 20 feet in the air. And the wind was blowing a little bit out of the north and hot that day and pretty soon it just sounded like a world coming in. Fritz come in from the south and he glided in when he got right, just right above me he pulled it open, the motor open, you know, and I thought the world had come to an <laughs> I bailed off in the haystack and he made a big circle and come back and he was low enough that I could see him just a laughing. <laughs> He heard about it the next time I seen him. <laughs> did you ever go with him underneath the bridge, Gib? No, I never did do that. I don't know if he ever went under there. Now. He might have. Oh, I think he did once or twice. What you know. bridge? The river, the river bridge. bridge. Yeah, the river bridge down there. Our river bridge? Yeah. yeah. There's plenty of room to fly. I fly right under that thing. Mm. <laughs> what a daredevil. <laughs> but an accident didn't kill him. No. People thought it might, but it didn't. <laughs> no, I guess it was shingles. Well, that's well, not it. He used to be a tail gunner toxic. in the uh, war, yeah. I think Jake toxic. said. Oh, my goodness. Stop, don't you think? I don't know. All that spraying that he did. I heard he had <laughs> shingles inside of his body. I Probably did. I've told this story before. I don't, I don't know. Too bad. Oh, Gene Makeley used to work for uh, Lockenauer. He had a place we, we, right below Lake Ogallala, there where we could go up there and go duck hunting. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, old Tex was going with us. And we were gonna, we were gonna fly up there. We got real windy, and I called old Tex about two o'clock, and he said, "The heck with you. Get your car down here. We're gonna drive." Mm -hmm. So we went up there. And he took a 410 shotgun one. He was going duck hunting with a 410. <laughs> I got out there and told old Gene, if I got anything, we get a duck today. So we kept pegging away and shooting the ducks, and old Tex had never got one. Finally got the middle of the afternoon, and the sun come out, and oh, God, it was nice. 
just kind of about half, everybody's out, half taking a nap, nap, and all of a sudden there's a whole bunch of little teal come along. Old Tex jumped up, bang, 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 bang. Shot three of them just like that. <laughs> oh, never forget that. <laughs> he probably reminded you, huh? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he was the prince of a guy. Yes, he was. And Wilma was nice when she oh. was pretty sharp when she was helping him. She sure was. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Always, she used to, when it's ever she come by the garage, I'd say, hey! She said, all right, come on, I'll tell you another one. And she'd come in, tell us a story, and then she'd say, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> always a new story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they were always naughty. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she still can tell some. Every day, doesn't she? Maybe she does. I think she probably went about every day. Because that's probably why she goes to, that keeps her walking up and down the street, yeah. you know. Yeah. She does pretty good, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, she does. Well, she used the walker some of the time, doesn't she? Well, but not very often on the street, I don't think. Okay. Maybe at home, she does. I, I think she I does. saw her down by her. Wagner's one day with well, she, I think she does sometimes, but yeah. I wonder well, how old she is about. Well, it. she's past 80, but I I thought she was kind of in between 80 and 90. Don't you think, Rand? Well, she told me, but I can't remember, but I was, I was thinking she was somewhere around 87, because I think she was 10 years older than I am. What do you think, William? Well, uh, from the age of her kids, I'd say she's Probably that because uh, the oldest one was in the same class Wes was in. Oh, and, okay. And Marilyn was in the same class as Dee. Mm -hmm. Oh. And then, of course, Dave was a tag along. Now, there's a talented young man. He's never used it much, but he sure is. He has the mm -hmm. You don't go out and help him with any planes, do you? Yeah. No. <laughs> Would you try it again if you had the opportunity now? Like, well, I think well, I'd pull out if I had one with him. He probably got one out there, he'd let you try it. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know if he said that his pop license or not, if he kept that up or not, I can't remember. That pilot license is good forever if it's going to get taken away from you. Oh, he said, <laughs> I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I know you Talk about your pilot license. I There's know. certain rules of have to make so many takeoffs and landings for it. Have somebody ride with me. Yeah, that, the rules. That's quit, hasn't it? I don't is know. he still? Is he still? Know. Is he still recording? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Are you still yeah, recording? Yeah, really? Yes. Yes. You uh, are. We got about another five, probably five or six minutes left. What do you want to add, Lilia? Huh? What do you want to add? I don't know. I'm trying to think of something else. <laughs> You've been doing pretty good. Yes, you have. Mm -hmm. um, Everybody has. Well, Cal, can you remember the family dinners, the cousins and their the parents, the aunts and uncles always getting together? On, I expect all of you got together for family dinners when you were kids more than they do now. Everybody's too busy now. Oh, I remember. Yes, I remember where it flies. I remember that dead young storm cellar. God, that was a busy place on Sunday afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> and also, <laughs> I don't know whoever did. 
But there's sure a bunch of windows in that barn got broken out. Oh, yeah, yeah, you don't know anything about that, Cal. <laughs> Leon, did you have big family dinner, dinners too? Yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. It's something wonderful. And I guess do. that's just something I observed from our family each time a grandmother or grandpa passed away. Well, then it split and go down to the next generation. Mm -hmm. I'm going to request one thing. Each one of you tell how many children you have. I have three. Two girls and a boy. Grandchildren? Four, I guess. <coughs> well, I, I have, have three. Two girls and a boy. <laughs> <coughs> Five grandchildren. Yeah. Well, I have two children, a girl and a boy, and two grandsons. I have three boys and uh, six grandchildren and 13 great-grandsons. I wonder how many great <laughs> well, actually, actually, one of them is a great-great, um, oh. one of the granddaughters. One of the grandsons married a, a girl who, her daughter had a little girl, so that oh. makes a great break. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, God, all right. Did you get any five-generation pictures? Um, not at a photographer, but we have it. Uh -huh. Just, Just um, a snapshot. No, I have one. Your, uh, your count, one, count. One, I had a little I have <laughs> one, a five-generation picture that's out of the dog. Yeah, Cal, how many do you have? Well, what? We got three, two girls and a son. <coughs> and right now we got two great grandchildren. One boy and one girl. Luna and uh, you you've got uh, three stepchildren too, one boy and two girls. Yeah, I guess I do. Yeah. Well Yeah. But now they're exes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well not it's, not it's your confusing. stepchildren. He's talking about oh, yes, I do. I have three stepchildren, too. <laughs> Bob and Kathy and Doreen. Yeah. All right. And I'm thrilled because now they call me their stepmother. I'm not the dad's wife. <laughs> For a while. You've that's my, Yeah, I have. So that's nice. <laughs> They're a nice addition. Yeah, they are. Well, folks, we've got three minutes left on the film. I'd like to run the film out. Uh, and while we're doing that, but I do want to thank each and every one of you for coming and participating in this. And we are going to have at least one more of these sessions. Uh, Lily, I think you're going to be involved in that. Oh. <laughs> have to get my thinking cap on again? Yes. <laughs> but I do want to thank each and every one of you. This has been really enjoyable. Are you going to... Uh do this in Gospel County too, since it's Furnace Gospel Museum? I would like to. I've talked to them at, uh, about going to Elwood and uh, doing it. They're, they're supposed to get back to me. I haven't heard anything back on to it. I should be here in, soon. So, I have uh, I've got one to do, one-on-one -on -one with uh, Bob Anderson and uh, Ray Bockerman. Uh, the family has asked me to do one for, on him. And uh, I've been asked to do it at Beaver City and at Danbury. Uh, Bob Anderson's going to have quite a little bit to do on uh, Wilsonville. He's running he's run some uh, information down and things down on his granddad and, and his dad and, and the relatives that lived at Wilsonville. So we'll have some of that. Then what are you going to do with them? We're going to show these at the... Hopefully, they're supposed to be able to show these at different times at the Senior Center this coming winter. Uh, try to do it in the afternoon right after dinner. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to be available for sale to anybody? The, the, this film will be put on DVDs, mm -hmm. and then we will sell the DVDs that anybody that's uh, interested in buying them. 
and Grace has got some more people lined up. It will be a money-making venture for the museum as well as Mr. Trasper. We have to pay him for all his out-of-pocket expenses, and there are quite a few with the film mm -hmm. that he's buying. So the film or the DVDs that we sell will have to cover his expenses. Mm -hmm. And we hope there will be a, a lot of people want He's having a lot of fun doing it too. Yeah. Really. Yes, yeah. it has been fun for him and us. Well, Cal, I don't know if you were out at my folks the Sunday dinner when remember we talked about the bandy chickens and our bandy hen was setting on a nest in the manger <laughs> at the barn and uh, that. Shetland pony we had, the kids would bring it in the house and they'd fix the plate and the only thing they ever found that it wouldn't eat was dill pickles.